Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Get Your Paint On this Thursday. I'm Jordan Lamb, studio painter here at Privateer Press. With me today, I have Jeff Olson. Hello. Oh, wait, hello. And Tony Konachak. Good morning. All right. Oh. Uh, Going to get into some announcements here uh, with the stream schedule, which we've got a little bit of some new stuff on there for you. Uh, just start us off, we got Dev Hangout Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Get your paint on here Thursdays at 10 a.m. We've got Lore Hangout tomorrow. Mm -hmm. With uh, it's gonna be Doug and Josh, Josh uh, tomorrow at ten, and then we got Primecast Live, I believe, the following Friday. Yeah, yeah. next Friday at uh, at ten a.m. as well. Eight days away. Eight days away. Uh, and then we got Staff Showdown, which is to be determined. Monthly, Actually, yeah. So, TBD. So the next one we have not determined the actual date for yet, uh, but we will be playing Riot Quest. What? Oh we're, dang! We're actually, really? We're actually going to be playing Riot yeah, Quest. Am I playing in that one? I don't know. Do you want to play, play in that, in that one? one? No, hell yeah. Can we you? all? Dude, we should just get like four people to play in that. Four one. player Riot Quest. Yeah, that'd be sick. We'll see. Let's we'll see it. how it goes. All right. Cool. Uh, let's move along here. We've got the Privateer Press Hobby and Terrain blog. Which uh, Danny is continually updating. Oh. We're getting some new updates in there with a new objective marker mm -hmm. for uh, the Infernal Table. And uh, I think we've already shown the completed tower. Mm -hmm. um, the so table is basically done. It's, all, it's done. The table is yeah. done at The table this itself point. Is, yeah. is complete. He's and he's on working on like cool new stuff. Yeah, he, we, don't, we yeah. haven't uh, shown what his... He hasn't like announced what his next big project nope. is. Okay, he's not. I, my, my lips are he's, sealed. He's keeping it. It's uh, on the DL, tight guys. Tight-lidded secret. Okay. Down low. On the DL. So uh, check out and subscribe to the Hobby Train blog. Uh, next, we got Lock and Load tickets. Uh, still on sale. Uh, lock and Load is going to be June 21st through the 23rd. This year, about four and a half, five weeks away now. So we're getting real close to it. Yep. Um, do we know if the hotel block that opened up is sold out yet? Probably, maybe. Oh, man. I, keep, I do not. That's a swanky question. All right. Well, yeah. we'll try and this, find out. <laughs> we'll probably <laughs> do our <laughs> job <laughs> and find <laughs> out that information. <laughs> <laughs> but if you come to Lock and Load, then you can talk to Jordan, Jeff, and myself right to our faces. We, wait. Yes. Like, actually, legit question. Do we, should, do we do like a get your paint on at Lock and Load? We should like totally do that. We should totally do that. Like a live get your paint on? I'm writing it down. Yeah. We, we're brainstorming this idea. <laughs> All right. It's a great idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we've got mini crates. Uh, last week to order uh, Asphyxious the Damned. Undamned. 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 Excuse me. This is, yeah, this is, yeah, this is he's, when. He's cooler now. A lot healthier. Been working out a bit, you know. Yeah, this is, this is him, veggies. like, back when he was a druid. Uh, next, we've got the June 5th. Uh, blue. subscribe by June fifth to get <laughs> Moto Chagatai. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, Moto Chagatai, the Unicorn Clan. Uh, and then we've got uh, Shosho Sho Sho Sadako. I'm just gonna just over. I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah, jump in on all of these. Yeah, I'm just do I haven't said these names enough to yeah. to have them down. Uh, the uh, other one, by the way, it's called it's Bride of Arcadius. Yeah, is, how you is pronounce it? Is it, it? Yeah. it Breed? Yeah, Breed A. Breed A. Uh, Arc uh, Adius. Yep. Yeah. And if you missed it, Jordan sure. Jordan painted up that model a couple weeks ago and get your yeah. paint on, so you can I go did. onto our uh, right Privateer to Press me, Prime YouTube actually. channel or on Twitch. I do oh. randomly have that model next to me. Right. Show it off. I'll show it off. Put it up there. This one. What's up, friends? I love the little bandage on his butt. Yep, the, that's the best part. Piggy. Yeah, you got poked in the butt. Yeah, piggy bottom. With the, the, the okay. Uh, we're gonna move back on. To did, we, did we also just yeah? <laughs> yeah, did, yeah, don't worry about it. Just like spoil uh, what right, we're going so to be painting today. Right today's there. model, as you guys may have seen, <laughs> uh, probably have no idea what this is. This is the uh, infernal cultist, one mm -hmm. of the the grunts from that unit. Um, unfortunately, yeah, this I is can't. not the unit leader. This is not the unit leader. Um, I thought that this guy would be a, a nice, simple model to throw on for, for this week. Um, maybe get it all painted up, painted up in an hour. So um, I am going to do some of the studio scheme. Uh, predominantly, this like black cloth is kind of what I'm going to be working on. Which is good, because people are always asking about yep. how to, different yep. ways to paint black. I hear you guys. I hear you guys. You guys are asking how to paint studio stuff. And we're going to deliver. For Infernals, and we're going we're gonna to deliver a little bit. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So just for Tony, because I know he always asks, uh -huh. uh, the base color that we're working with, I dropped a pen. Again. <laughs> Again. 
All right, don't worry about it. Folks. I'm gonna look. I got I got gaffer's tape over on the shelf here, and I'm just gonna like. Do you want it wrapped around your thumb or nah, your it's index cool. finger? It's cool. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. We're, we're all we're all. No, what we're gonna do here. is we're gonna put Velcro on all of them. We're just gonna put a ton of Velcro <laughs> all over Jordan. <laughs> all right. So we have, uh, Thamar Black and Iron Hole Gray is the base coat, and this is leaning a little bit more towards the. Um, the iron hole than the, the Thamar. Uh, I've already base coated most of this in this. It's a pretty, pretty dark base coat. Oh, wait, I forgot. Did we forgot to say that we're going to be showing off a riot gear card? Oh, yeah, we should just like do that. We, we, no, not do it now. We got we to gotta tease you it. You said at the top of the episode. No, we get to, at the top of the episode, we're going to say we got one oh, to show off. Right, and we're well. going to. We have a yeah. We have a. We're piece gonna of, show you guys some cool right right gear stuff. Yeah, a card a card from Riot Quest. We're gonna show sometime during the show. Definitely not right now or a second ago because you know. I was told not to by Jeff. Yeah, we gotta we gotta. Everybody blame Jeff. It's okay. Uh, so Thamar Black and Iron Hole. If you can find it, uh, Tony. It appears. Having a hard time. It appears that in my my whole big menu of. Paint splats. Uh, I do not see iron hole. This is yeah. Wow. I can't believe it was the first time we haven't well never come across fair. this. But For there's this color no iron still hole. Exists. Iron hole gray, right there. Just pretend it's right up there next yep. to the Thamar black. There you go. Bang. <laughs> right there. Boom. All right. Who runs this show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So the next. Um, color that we're going to mix into this to kind of start doing the, the progressing highlights here um, is a combination of two colors. Uh, if any of you have are familiar with the recipes for Retribution, this is actually the army green that they have. It's their Mage Hunter green uh, is what the mix is basically. It's um, Traitor green and Trollblood base is the mix to, to create this green. And uh, I've got a, a pot of it mixed up because I've been using it a bunch for the uh, infernals for this for this cloth. So this is a, a nice kind of show it on here. It's kind of a greenish blue. Yeah, it's got, definitely got some green in there for mm -hmm. sure. It's, it's a it's a nice color. I like it a lot. Um, <coughs> gives a little bit of a colorful <laughs> drab. Yeah, yeah. But we're gonna go. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that kind of olive drabby. We're going to mix that into just a little bit of the base coat to get kind of like this color right here. Yep, yep, should be, should be visible. And then we're going to start putting that in for highlights. Uh, we got a question in chat from, from longtime stream follower Jeff, 985-0817, uh, who wants to know how you actually manage, and we've covered this before, but it's probably good to cover it again, how you actually affix your models to the cap. So, uh, double-sided tape. And you just kind of jam it on there, right? Yeah, you just uh, cut out a piece of double-sided tape. You can kind of see it. Out yeah, like, the, like foam mounting tape? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, you use the thick stuff, right? Not like scotch tape. Correct, yeah. yeah. Scotch tape is not going to hold on yeah. to your model. And also, Jeff, uh, your question about when will the pirate monkey get done on the stream. We already did it. The pirate, the powder cake monkey? No, we didn't. Didn't it? No? Which one? Oh, sorry. I apologize. That You're was the Malady Man. Malady Man monkey. Malady Man monkey. Pirate monkey, I don't know. Probably sometime. I'll, Maybe. I'll write that down. Like a yeah. done. Powder monkey. Can you uh, actually do me a favor and scroll up into a chat? I saw another ch question that I wanted to hit, which is uh, Seanster3000 was asking, so, uh, if, so if you may or may not know, uh, we did the Art of War Machine Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and one of the little cool things you could order in there to get part was the James model, which is the big, crazy, robotic-looking, spiky lady. Yeah, she's um, like, what is it, the Iron... Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden. Iron Maiden. Um, and so people are beginning to receive that model, and his question, <coughs> or her question, was, uh, when is that going to hit War Room? Because all of our Riot Quest models will have War Machine rules. Uh, the answer to that is we're hoping to get that into War Room probably sometime next week. Uh, no promises, um, but yeah, we're, we we realize that people are getting those models, and we're going to get it into War Room um, ASAP. I'm actually I'm painting up that model right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, not right this second, which would be really cool. I should we should yeah, definitely be painting. We actually could be this. sitting here painting we while could we're be. on them. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm painting that for uh, for some of our live stream purposes at home too. So yeah, 
because we always produce a couple extra not super duper studio quality miniatures to put on stream so that we have copies of models and yeah, stuff like that. They're not studio quality, but they look but good. But they still for, look good. For playing games. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the thing. You don't have to paint a model to super duper duper professional levels to have it look dope on the table. You just get to the level that you like. And by so, watching uh, Jordan paint, maybe a little osmosis and then mm -hmm. some practice, you put those two things your together models in a blender. Your spring fully formed from then, your uh, forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're putting in a little bit more of that uh, that Mage Hunter Green mix, uh, which is a little bit more of that Trader Green and, and Trollblood base, um, just to brighten it up a little bit. Uh, and the next step after this is going to be straight uh, straight application of that mix, followed by a little bit of Tony. This is for you, by the way. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of moldy ochre mixed moldy in. Is, is moldy ochre your favorite? I love moldy ochre, man. It it works for everything. I, I do. The art nerd in me just likes ochre <coughs> colors. Yeah, ochre colors are great. Isn't it ER? Or am I crazy? Oh, no, I'm wrong. No, it's O-R. O-C-H-R-E. -O yeah. Iredim. Hey, is T Marg in chat? Because if he's not here, he's going to be pretty sad that he's missing the kind of first reveal of us painting Infernal models. I, uh, well, I have I mean, not seen T Marg in chat. Infernal models yet. last week, but this oh, is. Oh, wait, oh, wait. What did we do? Did I miss that? Yeah, no, no, you, you were, were here. What were we do? literally stand sitting right there. Okay, listen. <laughs> I'm usually just blackout drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not blackout drunk. Don't listen yeah. to him. What's going it's on? What true. model did we paint last week? We painted the dust lighter. Oh yeah. my god, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm pretty good, dumb. <laughs> good job. Good job, Jeff. Can we get a round of applause for yeah. Jeff in the chat, please? Yeah, can we for get some... totally forgetting that he was here last week. <laughs> Witnessing us painting things. So, luck god 84 Just an infernal grunt from the unit? Yes. 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 Yeah, this is not the unit, the weapon attachment. This is not... The unit the leader. leader. Yep. This is just a grunt. Um, They've all got pretty cool poses. It is one of my cool favorite poses. sculpts from the unit. It's yeah, really I've sculpt. I've been watching Jordan been painting the studio ones the last like week or whatever, and I I really really like this unit. They look really good. They've all got these cool masks and stuff. Yeah, I think I might deviate a little bit from the the standard recipe, and I might paint that mask uh, red. Yes, which would be nice. Super cool. Yes. I love. I actually. I love the masks on the the cultists. That's what drew me. In fact, them, I'm gonna base coat that to them so you guys can see what that mask looks like because it looks really freaking cool. Pop yeah, he's out. got like a big scowly face on him. It also, I like that it helps reinforce the fact that infernalists are uh, could be anybody. Yeah, they could be your friend, your neighbor, mm -hmm. your spouse, your trusted ally. You never know. What uh, what red are you slapping on here? Just out of curiosity. Uh, this is just some scorn red mixed with the the base coat. Sure. The, um, the iron hole and thing. What about putting like go. glowing eyes or anything like that? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe. I'm just throwing that like out there. Purple glowing eyes could be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He's definitely frowning. That's. I, I was gonna. <laughs> if those are glowing eyes, you have to have like some uh, some decent production value on your infernalist mask, right? These are just dudes, but I guess they have infernal yeah. infernal yeah, like, granted yeah, powers. Yeah. So well, well, it's like maybe it's not entirely out of the question. I just like to I, I like to imagine that like out there beyond space and time that there's just yeah. like a factory and there's like infernal horrors yeah, that are just like making a mess. on like the line yeah. that's like making like masks for all their cultists. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose uh, I suppose as well that if you had glowy eyes in your infernalist mask, that would give you like a lot of street cred because like a poser infernalist can just yeah. put on the mask and be like, oh, I'm an infernalist. And yeah. then you like make your eyes glow. Yep. Yeah, I didn't think so. Nobody believes you, Chuck. <laughs> Craig, I think that's better. Craig, For a poser yes. infernalist. Yes, Craig, Craig. Is, is a poser infernalist. <clears throat> Jorge, this is the uh, one of the grunt cultist models from the Infernal's cultist unit. Yeah, don't worry. I know that all the Infernal models that you guys have seen are super dope. Just wait until you see the other ones that are also super dope. Yep. I've had they didn't care so who I was until I put on the mask. That's <laughs> thing. I've had so much fun painting these models in the last That's couple of weeks. Some Bane stuff right there. Super duper duper fun. These models are all fantastic.
Yeah, if, uh, we got a nice, uh, nice good look at a lot of the models. If you haven't seen it uh, since it was last Friday, oh, yeah, the Infernal last Friday. Infernal Friday, um, the video that we had, which is uh, you can find it on Facebook uh, or on our YouTube channel. Um, but it's uh, called the Infernal Forge, and uh, that's a nice little quick quick video. It gives you kind of a behind the scenes of our production, production, production process, yeah. yeah. And you get a little sneak peek on uh, a lot of the work in progress uh, miniatures that are being produced back there for Infernals. Yeah. I recommend you check it out. Of course, I'm very biased. Yeah, I think it's also very interesting because I think most people don't exactly understand how models are made. Right. right? Yeah. Um, and so, like, I actually walked back um, into sort of the mold e area of the warehouse um, production. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Of, of the uh, <laughs> yesterday, and you, you just have like these huge racks of all of these molds, these discs, basically. Uh, it's very interesting. It's very, it's very unique. It's very different process than, you know, what you you think how the whole thing kind of works. Right. Yeah. Well, somebody mentioned, uh, but it's like you know, this is technology has been around for centuries. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, fundamentally, it hasn't. Yeah. It hasn't changed. I mean, that's kind of the thing is, as the miniatures hobby has evolved, and you know, new materials and stuff have been introduced, um, like metal, like it's, it's still it's a proven technology because it's been around for. Billions of years, basically, as yeah. far as anything as civilization is concerned. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, essentially. Physical object. Yep. And you put it in a thing. Then you encase it in something. Then you empty it out. And then you fill it back up again. Yep. Man, I just, wow. We just reduced that down into uh, mm -hmm. like four seconds. High five. Boom. All right. So this highlight that I'm putting on here now is that Moldy Ochre uh, Mage Hunter Green mix. So this is essentially Trader Green plus Trollblood Base plus um, just a tad bit of Moldy Ochre. You can see those lines coming out. I would like to point out, like, this is it's a very, like, subtle color going on here overall. Like, mm -hmm. that that look. It is not intended to be super Yeah, it's not supposed to be punchy. Green. It's it's supposed to be black, right? Like yeah. And it will you know a lot more of it will kind of pop once the elements around it like mm -hmm. flesh, right. his, flesh like his yeah. arm for example. That was one thing we were talking about before we started was how how dark the miniature looked on camera in all black cuz it wasn't zenithal highlighted. So with this it's the same thing. We start getting those colors and contrast on there. Dude, this guy went to the together. Schwarzenegger school of arm. Yeah, okay. yeah, this dude's got some some this, serious like this guy's arm strength going on. Dude, this guy spent twenty years on the pain wheel. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Jordan, you even know what we're talking about? No, I don't. Have you ever, have you seen the original Conan? No, Jesus. <laughs> Wait, are we keeping a list? One of these days, I'm just gonna storm out of here and slam the door. <laughs> I mean. It People have spent literally hours asking yes. me, have you seen this Yeah, we movie? actually should start building a list. And we, have, we should have a weekend where we show him like three movies, and then he comes in, and the next episode, while he's painting, he just gives us like you know two-minute rundowns. Yeah. The two-minute rundown of the movie. Yeah. So, so this is what you have to do. You have to write down what you're, what you're thinking about the movie now. Like, what is your conception of a movie you haven't seen that is in the popular culture today, and then how it compares afterwards. Maybe we can. Yeah, I think the uh, I think sort of my hole at the moment is I have not seen that um, Spider-Man animated film. I have not either, actually. Whatever it is, Spider-Verse. Jeff, we should That's see the one. that in the Spider-Verse. I I will see it sometimes. I still haven't seen it. But like it won like an Academy Award or something, so it did. I apologize for all the people out there. I will see it. One best animated. Uh... I also like uh, this guy's like this guy's dagger is no nonsense too. It is it's a big old yeah. Dagger. Yeah, he he's he ain't messing around. Actually, I, I think actually the thing the part I liked about the model is I really like all of his pouches and stuff he has hanging off of him. Oh, dude, he just got straight up got a head on his thing too. I mean, no. I don't know. It, it, look, that dagger is as long as his arm. Can it be yeah. called a dagger at that point? I mean, that's what we called it on the card. So sorry. Well, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Yeah, that thing's gnarly. There we go. Yeah, get some some flesh in there. Yeah, start base coating some of these other colors here. This is uh, Midland flesh, by the way, Tony. If we could get a whole splat of color on the screen. Sp 
Midland. Midland. I think this guy should be really tanned because I really like the idea that he's been hanging out at um, what's it called? In the beach, B- bodybuilders beach or whatever down in like Muscle LA. Beach. Muscle Beach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the idea that he's just out there with his bros. Yeah. Throwing medicine balls. <laughs> throwing <laughs> medicine balls in the sand. Yep. No, they're playing volleyball with medicine. Being balls. like with like top with, gun level <laughs> with his mask on. Yes, I, yeah. yes, I, I, yes. I assume that they do everything with their mask on. <laughs> so they go to like the infernal cafeteria, <laughs> right? Cafeteria. They get like the, you know, and they've got like oh man, macaroni again, <laughs> or casserole, casserole, or no, it'd be, like, be like no, it'd be like middle school cafeteria pizza. Or middle school meatloaf. Yes, you can oh. have these. Yeah, Ponto Hornblower. Yes, you, you, you get some gains. Yeah. You, yeah, get some gains if you join the Infernals. You can fill in those gains however yeah. you want, <laughs> yep. too. <clears throat> he has his, uh, his 12 eight white, uh, egg white breakfast. Yes. <laughs> He's got his three egg yolks with his 12 egg whites. Ah, oh, Steve Gibson actually went out and checked his mail while watching the stream and found that he had his James Oh, there we go. Yeah, there, there you go. go. That's what we're talking about. Okay, nobody else leave the stream, though. You check after well, we're it, done. No, like, you stay with us. Yeah. We talked a lot about it a little bit, I think, during the, the dev chat, too. Uh, Welsh Masters coming up tomorrow. Becky mm-hmm. Red in, in chat just said that they're excited to be traveling down to Welsh Masters. That's Excellent. a big tournament in Welshlandia. Welshlandia. Welsh oh, my God. So, yeah, uh, good luck to all the people who are heading out to that tournament and going to be playing them game olds this weekend and stuff. So it's a big tournament over there. Have fun, folks. All right, so you're going back in and adding some detail to that mask? Yeah, I'm just taking uh, straight red or scorn red now just to bring some highlights in there. See, I tried to change it up. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. like how it happened. You're trying to workshop yeah. it. You're, you're working on your full. You got to do it live. That's the yeah. best way. We're doing it live. There you go. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you can really see his like his mm-hmm. angry face. Mm-hmm. All the best villains have like masks. Mm-hmm. He made, okay, so so Doug is in Twitch chat, C Cat, and he said could have sold his soul to get a better physique. So that apparently is potentially canonical that one of the reasons you might sell your soul to the infernals is for sweet gains for for being swole <laughs> yeah to get yoked or he could just be working out on the beach between cult meetings yeah i like the fact that people sold their soul for gains <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of getting pushed around it's like watching jordan poke away, getting some some deets in there. So tell us what, uh, where are you focusing your highlights? Um, it's very, it seems very area, edgy, edge highlighty at yeah, the moment. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like picking out the places where the light will catch on the mask. That looks dope. <clears throat> It's all flooding back to me now, by the way. This whole time I've been thinking I've been talking about like last week's stream where we're talking about alien stuff. I get it now. I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry folks. I was totally for <laughs> <laughs> we, we got that desolator. It's all flooding back now. How many unique sculpts are in this unit? It's like four, right? So or something it's like four, that. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a four so or six unit, I think, too. Three off the top of my head. Two mm-hmm. grunts, the unit leader, and then the weapon attachment. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, the weapon attachment, I think, is Yeah, you got the yeah. cool fire in his hand and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the cool reverse horn helmet. Yeah, though it's thing. weird. And it's yeah, it's not forward. really horns, but but something. Soul for swole, yes, says the dragon pup in, in Twitch chat. Soul for swole. Making that t shirt now. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta do right. curls for the girls so you can sacrifice. <laughs> curls them. for the girls. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah, I desperately want a t shirt that says Yeah, sw- soul, soul for soul, swole soul with the uh, with the cultist like uh picture on it. Yep. Becky Red 
has a question about the best colors to use for painting rust. Jordan, you can mention give yeah. your thoughts on that while I post this Orange painting browns. rust and grind. Oh, hold on, actually, let me let me jump yeah. in. Let me see if I can guess this because I've done the rust and stuff. You, so in in my experience, I've usually base coat with a brown and then stipple on some like oranges and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I got there. For the most part. You want to use colors kind of like this. And this is... I don't know if Tony wants to like... Oh, whoa, this is way too That's much. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying, trying real Back hard Back it folks. up. Yeah. There we go. Oh, gosh. No oh, help. Those colors, which is... Uh, Cato Red Highlight, Umbral Umber, Signar Yellow, Blood Tracker Brown, uh, Bogram Brown, and uh, Bloodstone. So I like colors like this. It's just kind of the g general color palette that you want. And it's a lot of just like stippling and dry brushing mm -hmm. and messing around. The first stuff. time I kind of read an article in some random painting hobby magazine years ago it, it it seems so the opposite of what you would do mm -hmm. because you're like oranges and reds and browns and yellows what the heck but then you when you kind of get it all going it it gets you, you as you go more and more into the process of stippling on these colors and stuff you're like oh wait it looks exactly like rust yeah but like i remember reading it or watching the video whatever it was it was years ago and i was just like this this doesn't make any sense to me Yeah, check out that video for sure. I think there's also, so there's two versions. There's one with Dallas, and then there's one with... Um, Worn Metal, with probably. With B-Roy, yeah. For Worn Metal. I will post this one as well. So you get you get a little different look. It's not specifically rust, but he does kind of um, have an approach mm -hmm. for painting rust. So I'm just mixing a little bit of... Um, <clears throat> Menoth white base into this to create these like really strong reflective highlights here. And this is kind of just to define all the the shapes that are in the mask. <coughs> Alec, what kind of chocolate do I want from Germany? Uh, I will take any chocolate you're willing to send here. I also hear you have delicious gummy candy. Uh, is that a also is acceptable. Really? Is that a thing in Germany? That, I, just, I guess I wouldn't just... Chocolate think. and gummy candy? Well, I mean, chocolate I get. I didn't yeah. realize Germany was known for their gummy candies. No, no, I get gummy candies. I've had... Uh, uh, my cousin's wife is from Germany, so from time to time I get the hand-delivered German bags, of huge bags of gummy mm. candy, and they mm. uh, usually don't survive the drive home. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going back to the, the cloth now that I've defined this mask. And uh, we're going to put a final highlight in here, mm -hmm. which is going to be um, take the moldy ochre highlight that we just had with the uh, the base coat. Oh, wow, that mask looks sweet now yeah. that we yeah. go back to the camera for that. Um, that looks dope. Oh, my then, gosh. Uh, we're going to add some Menoth White highlight to that just to, to get some real, real ting just highlights to pop in here. out. And kind of going back to that, like, textured line, like, hash marking that we were talking about back in the couple of episodes back when we were looking at like the leather and such uh, I'm gonna kind of do that on this as well to just to create that like cloth texture let us know when you have a good moment for a quest a, qu a question this is a fun moment okay for a question. well then fluffy zealot in twitch chat asks uh, I usually paint black base then block in the skin slash plate colors then hit it with an umbral wash uh, it just thinks it makes his army look drab and they'd like to make it pop him or her uh got any any tips on how to um help you know make things pop probably especially over like a black base i think is yeah kind of... um don't use a wash okay uh, like uh the, whenever you wash an, an, an entire model in something you're always gonna pull you're gonna pull out the details but it's gonna kind of shade mute, everything it's gonna mute all the colors right you're you're shading the entire model with one color. So it's going to kind of look samey across the entire model. 
which is what's creating that, that drab look. So if you don't do that, then you'll have more of the original colors. And I think just pushing contrast more will help a lot of that as well. Like the more contrast you have, the easier things are gonna read. That's why I push the contrast really high on the mask because it's got so much detail in there and putting the contrast in the right places really defines that shape so that you can kind of see all the elements of that that you wanna, you wanna be looking at. It's also why like with black cloth that you're painting green, like a greenish tone, like what you're seeing here, um, how you can make it look black even though it's still being painted predominantly green. It's kind of that same concept of using contrast to. Yes, that's almost like that's almost like some hard. color wheel kind of stuff too. Kinda, bit, yeah. Right, where it's like in a way, you want some some complementary and some opposing colors to kind of make it all stand out a little bit. Yeah, that's part of the reason why I chose red for the mask is because red and and green typically work really well together. Christmas colors. Yeah, it's, that is a danger with that's, yeah, that's the sure. one danger, right? And and it's it's funny that that's the case because of you know how Christmas has really like taken those two colors and almost ruined the pair for everybody. Mm -hmm. Just because Yeah, if you use a the, classic Christmas bright red like a candy red <clears throat> candy yeah. apple red and like a green Mm -hmm. I, I have a friend who painted his army like that, and we definitely tease him about his Christmas army. Yeah, we get. Uh, I, I think one of the ways you can get around that is is kind of like Jordan's doing here, where the green is green, and so it's offsetting the red. The red is making the green look greener, but because it's not, doesn't have that like punchy mm -hmm. Christmas green, or even that like dark pine tree green. The fact that it's all desaturated. Yeah, using. Helps. Desaturated reds and greens really helps. Um, the fact that this cloth isn't actually green, like it's supposed to be black cloth with kind of a like greenish yellow highlight, um, helps out a lot because that means the bulk of what you're looking at doesn't look green. So it's not like having green and then red right next to each other. You're just having a little bit of green next to one element that's red. Um, and, and remember, the, the Infernal's masks are not this color. They're, they're like a silver color um, with a little bit of like brass tone, like touches on them. Uh, I just thought that this would be a cool deviation. Yeah, that looks sweet. Uh, it'd be it, cool to do like if someone to customize their army by like putting like unit leaders with different colored masks and stuff. Yeah, that would be Or really no, that'd actually be a cool way to actually differentiate your, your units. Like mm, to have yeah. different mask different colors. Mask like colors. This, is, this is purple unit. Mm -hmm. This is red unit. I'm actually going to. Try and do these eyes. Oh, we're getting purple. in here, boys. Are you gonna do? Are you gonna do the glow? No, we're getting yeah. in there. Oh, this guy's for real. He's the real deal. Yep. He's the real deal. I'm gonna let that dry for. All right. Once you once you're done with these eyes, we should take a look at our P3 painter submissions. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, g we can go ahead and jump to that because okay. um, the I'm gonna let the this dry in here for a second. All right. So for those those of you who may or may not know, hashtag P3 Painters down there on the right side of your screen. You can use that hashtag to post to Instagram uh, pictures of your privateer press models in progress. We want to see what you're painting. And from time to time, we uh, well, every week we look at those and we find some cool ones and then we talk about them on the stream like now. So here we go. We got our first one. This awesome Dracodile. Oh, Dracodile. Dracodile. Yeah, I love this Dracodile. Uh, it was something that jumped out to me uh, was the this like really nice glow on the tail. Um, oh yeah, that's cool. Which you can see. Uh, it's very. Yeah, um, that's a good shot of it. Yeah, it's it, it's very like undersea, mm -hmm. um, like Little Mermaid kind of like bright lobster colors kind right. of thing. That's sick. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, I like the spines. I like. I about the, to say, I also really love the striations on the spines. Yeah, it's just this is a really nice dial. and the base looks really cool. It's just the, the complete package, right? Yeah, like, it's even got the base. Even has like custom stone water blocks and yeah, water stuff. effects down there. That's oh man, look, the eyes are really cool. Man, Dracodile is a sick model, it and is this really is like model. that's like I think our coolest like huge base. Look at that! Just yeah. right, right in the jaws. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Thank you, Hoaxer Chris, for this 
Dracodile. Yeah, it's a sick Dracodile. All right. Well, the next the next couple are actually updates. Yeah, from was... people or addi- additions and updates from people who've oh interesting who we've shown <laughs> off before. Yeah, there's a couple of things. Drizzle me. I saw that we haven't seen. Um, yeah, this, so this is the. If we go all the way to the last page, you'll see the <coughs> the little. Uh, oh yeah, this is a thick off. legs and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, the phantasms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we looked at the. It was just a mouse last time, right? Yep. Yep. And so now we're seeing that that style kind of put on yeah. the other phantasms. But I'm just I I'm yeah. loving that stripy dotty yeah. painty style. Yeah, this is like really unique style that I think works really well for especially the for Grimkin Grimkin, models. Yeah, yeah. Holy smokers. Um just um, because they're so you know, it's such a fantasy esque kind of weird Hey, let's talk about metal and rust and stuff. Take a look at yeah. the on their on and on the little chimney thing basically. On the like, pumpkin snowman. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really sharp. Yeah, it looks it's good. taking some like really rusty colors and then taking like a very, very bright and vibrant uh like metallic color. Yep. And going right over the top of it with a little bit of <laughs> Tommy is sweet. Yeah, really cool. These really custom these are custom bases too here. Mm-hmm. So then there's Whatever rabbits. These... Can we go spend some time on the the yeah. carbits? Actually, I'm sorry, can you back it up two pictures real quick? Because I was seeing on the mouse, like his I feel like on this picture his whiskers Yes. Look really pronounced there on his muzzle. Yes. Nice job. Good contour lines mm-hmm. following the face. Right. Sorry for that little distraction there. Yeah, these crabbits are sweet. Look at these. They look like uh they look like they look very shriveled and wrinkled. Yes. Yeah. It's very pronounced. Yeah, I like yeah, that. They look like a, a na- like one of those um hairless cats kind of. Oh yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's also like really different from what the studio ones look like too. Like yeah, the studio ones have this are like very really clean, very clean, very flat <clears throat> um, skin, and they don't have a lot of variation like that. And these ones are really very cool textured. Yeah, it's kind of it's nice to see that texture getting there. I also like there's a very small detail on here that I really like and is sticking out to me, and that is on this pink crabbit where the gums are. Yeah, it's got like that a blue bright gum. Blue gives it a nice color pop, and is uh, you know that's. That's something that like I get trapped in all the time is having these preconceived notions of what what stuff is su- what color things are supposed to be. So to, uh, so having that and and getting away from yep. kind of your typical flesh color, I think is uh, very smart and working well. Yeah, those look good. Damn. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's a great shot coming right at you. Action pose. Action. All right, uh, this next photo. Is uh, an update from earlier lava painter, earlier right? paint jobs. Yeah, this is lava painter. Oh damn, these look sick. So yeah, so a while back, uh, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago, something like that. Uh, lava painter posted a a photo of a like neon nighttime skyline. Oh kind of man, those retros. are my favorite. I think those are the so coolest good. buildings. I this think is I've seen. totally like Jeff's. Yeah, yeah. If if he, he loves this stuff, yeah, yeah. I'm a big like '80s like decade. Like that style kind of fanboy nerd, but these—I mean, these are just. But it's mostly because I'm going through a midlife crisis, and that's when I was born. <laughs> so this is how it works. These are excellent. I just—I love this, and I know um, I want to point out that uh, that frothy cat, who's also uh, posts frequently on on hashtag P3 Painters, and is often in our chat, is also doing a similar style to this, yeah. uh, and is and is really killing it. Like the the thing that I like that stands out to me about this process is that if you're looking at these two industrial complexes here, you're looking at the paint. It's not a complex no. approach. It's it not so a simple, difficult but thing certainly to accomplish. Not. Yeah. Uh, but I think for most of us, when we're sitting there coming up with the concept and then translating that to something finished on the model it, is the, is the trick. So well done. Is this the same person who had like the really cool, like parking lot painted on the basis for the buildings? Is that a different one? You know what I'm talking I about? I cannot remember. I don't remember. If someone had a really cool building where they actually had like all the parking lot spaces. Like I think it was even like the, 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 the industrial complex. Or oh, whatever. I remember what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Maybe that wasn't on P3. No, there was just someone was who different. pointed us in the painting group or something. Yeah. I do remember seeing that. I think it was on Facebook. I don't think it was on P3 Painters. Yeah, people are doing crazy cool things with their Monpoc buildings. Which and I stuff. love to see. It's you know, I was really excited when we decided to do the buildings. Um, a because, you know, they're they're gorgeous sculpts. Mm-hmm. Like they're really, really nice. And there's there's nothing better than having a really nice 
skyline to yep. your mom pop game. Absolutely. Like, there is literally literally nothing like it. Yep. Um, which is really, really cool. So um, kudos to all of you guys for putting together these really awesome buildings for your super awesome mom pop tables. Well, I think there's something to be said, too, for the um, for the scale change, right? Oh, like I've got to get back on the thing. Oh, yeah, we're back oh, on whoa. the thing. You went back. I didn't I didn't give you a heads oh, up. Oh, 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 Lordy. Uh, Sorry, I was working but, on know, filling in some some gaps there. <laughs> <laughs> like I love I love painting thirty mil miniatures, um, but it is nice to have a have a game or some form of change when your scale changes, mm-hmm. so you're painting different things in different ways. I love tiny miniatures. The tinier t- the miniature, tiny the better guys, for me. Yeah. Teeny tiny things. In fact, what I would like to do is either, um, so when when Robin and I go to Japan. Here and right. coming up in a few months, um, but you know we're gonna go visit the Tokyo Tower, which is obviously what the Tokyo Triumph is based on. So what I want to do is I want to either get someone to sculpt or maybe just go source some little third party tiny little miniatures and put us on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, little, no. like, uh, <laughs> put us on like little uh, tourists like on the building. You know, maybe just get maybe get someone to like green stuff something or just find little tiny That's people pretty, yeah. and put them on the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need a space needle. I agree. We should have a space. I'm surprised we don't have a space needle from Mom Pock. That is a great point. We have not done a space needle. I'll talk to Oz about that after the stream. Riker's Iron, prepare for a wave of LED buildings. That would be cool. I don't know. Ooh. I don't know if he's throwing out a challenge or if you, he's uh, show, alluding you, to something that he's working right on. Are you flexing right now, Riker's Iron? Do, 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 <laughs> trying to flex? Do you flex? Do you flex? So for right small. Catch up on the Twitch chat a little bit here. Just make sure we didn't miss any critical question. Soul for soul. Oh, dude. I mean, uh, let's see. LED in the buildings would be cool, but man, you're just dribbling out <laughs> so much of the base of the model. <laughs> it is going, just taking your dribble. You're just going mm-hmm. to town on the inside of that thing. But man, bungee jumping off a tower. Oh, that'd be cool. So this is just some uh, some rucksack tan, by the way, which is a, a really good highlight for the Gun Corp brand that I used to base coat this stuff. That's your Q, Tony. I was watching the painting. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to show off our Riot Quest card now? This Gun oh, yeah. So here, let's let's sort of uh, pre- so we so if if you haven't heard about Riot Quest, by the way, it's our new game coming out. Um, I think it's I think we even announced or said something recently. I think it's pre released in the Gen Con. I believe that is the plan. Um. And it's our cool little arena skirmish game. It's going to take place on a hex map. And it's sort of like this weird post-apocalyptic alternate future of the Iron Kingdoms. And we've been, Hungerford's been showing off some stuff online. There's actually a, uh, a Riot Quest Facebook group you can join to see some of the models. I think we've been showing off some of the models and some of the cards and stuff in the game. It's very different than War Machine. So get that out of your head right now. It's oh, like yeah. a totally they, different game. They experience. are not the same at all. Yeah, so all the models will have also War Machine rules, but the, they also have rules for Riot Quest itself, which is a totally different game. So we're actually going to show off one of the Riot Gear cards that you can equip to your models during gameplay after your models have collected some some loot. So we're going to show the top of the card here first because we're bad at camera work. I just love this art so much. From Des with Loves. These push are it, bang Push rounds. it towards the miniature, Jordan. Yeah, push it back a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Bang rounds. So there's the art, the three coins in the top left. It's how much it costs to equip it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then go ahead and show us some of the the rules here. And I'll probably post a full picture on the Facebook group after the stream just so we get the whole thing. So you probably don't need to – if someone wants to go and post right now, but maybe like 20 minutes, I'll probably just post it online. But yeah, so these uh, these uh, these really increase the range damage capacity or hitting power for your for someone who's got a range weapon. You equip it on. Yeah, without bit. context of how the rules work, mm-hmm. this, these rules probably don't make much sense. But hey, bigger, uh, bigger bullets, bigger, more bigger bullets, bullets and, and booping people around yeah. after yeah. you bop I mean, them. You feedback give them a bop. is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Y'all yep. should be fairly comfortable with that rule by now. And uh, in Riot Quest, movement uh, movement shenanigans are a big deal. Yeah, it can be, a, and and the game uses. Um, <clears throat> the same dice from, from Mompok. Mompok, so, yeah. So if you see things like strikes and power die and stuff, it's uh, basically uses the same dice from Mompok. So cool. Thank you so much. Oh, show you the back of the card. I'm not really sure they've seen. Yeah, I love art, the art, and I love all the Saturday morning cartoon kind yeah. of big, expressive, poppy 
cool colors and stuff we're using for this stuff. I think it just looks really cool. I think it's very different than anything we've kind yeah. of put I'm out a, before. I'm a huge fan of, yeah. uh, of all of this stuff. The, it's all looking real good. So, And then uh, we've also been working on Tony and the Lunchtime Paint Crew mm -hmm. have been getting um, extra models. So these are work in progress shots of us getting um, more models done up. So we uh, have some cool demo sets and stuff, so we can show people at like lock and load and do streams and stuff. Oh, yeah, it just occurred to so me. So here's, here's just yeah, a couple Tony, of the you in need the recipe things. for the bases, don't you? No, no, cool. I got it. All We're right. rolling with this one. Sick. Because I got yeah, that's the that's the nice thing about our our live stream stuff is since they're uh, they don't we we kind of follow the studio scheme, loosey goosey. Yeah. Inspired by how's that? Inspired by true events. So we have two different models. two. Or we got some irises. So we basically have two sets of irises and two yeah. sets of dreyfuses. Yeah, and the and the reason we did this is just because since we're going to be playing on stream, uh, you're only allowed to use one named model in your crew. So you won't ever have each of each two type, iris. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't, you can't player, have repeats of them. Right. Each player might have that model. So yeah, we, we kind of totally changed cool. up the colors just to be able to tell whose was whose. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like and in that way, it's similar to War Machine where. You can only have one copy of Iris in your list, but you might be playing against an Iris as right. well. Exactly. Yeah, cool. these are these are a lot of fun. I'm liking these a lot, Tony. You're doing good work. Thank you, sir. All right. I learned it by watching you. Oh, Tony. That's that's kind of you. That's kind of you. Well we'll get we'll Can we get do something cool with this guy's this stuff. guy's dagger? Can we get all sorts of glowy and stuff? This glowy dagger? You want a glowy dagger now? What's wrong with you? I like glowy things. Um, so uh, Striker, 911. Uh, yes, Dreyfus is, in fact, on a medium base. He's on a 40 millimeter base. Although base size has no bearing on in, in, the game in Riot Quest. Correct. So really quick, this is just a, a mixture of a little bit of brown ink plus some Thamar black, uh, plus a little bit of mixing medium and a lot of water. That's how we're getting this kind of like wash in here. Say that one more time. So it's Thamar Black, brown ink, mixing medium, and water. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at it. really adds a lot of depth to like the moment you put on that strap. It like really added a yeah, lot of. It gets of, back into those like little crevices that are mm -hmm. kind of a pain in the butt to paint by themselves. Now I want to qualify. Just redefines all of that because you had that question before about not using washes, and mm -hmm. I just want to be clear that your statement was not not to use washes over the whole model, but not to use the same wash over the whole. Mm -hmm. model. Correct. Yeah, you'll see that. Like I'm being very selective about where I'm using this, so that yeah. it it just covers specific elements of the model that I want to look a, a certain way. Yeah, I believe it's a fluffy, fluffy zealot. zealot. Yeah. So yeah, washes are totally legit controlled technique washes. to use. Yeah. Yes, totally a thing that's worth doing. Um, I might even put a little bit of this on, the, on that mask. Oh, Alec, that Tony looks. and Jordan have a local player looking for a circle of Orboros painting video. Do you have a link for one that you guys have done? Um, the closest that we have, or I can link you to to two of them that might go together um, is is how to paint stone. Well, isn't there also a video on like how to do like the circle, the the, the armor kind of stuff that raised effect? Um, that no, the glow there's a thing? glow. Yeah, a glow effect is is probably a, another. That was the other one I was thinking of that would be useful um, for that. So I will post those two videos. We don't have a specific glow, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe painting leather. Painting stone and then painting a glow will will get you yeah uh, you know maybe seventy two, two thirds of, of the yeah. way there uh, for what you want. So let me go ahead and pull those videos up and I will post them into the chat. Also, um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of uh, throw out some community stuff. Uh, if there is also a War Machine subreddit, um, someone posted a really cool picture of their uh, Circle Army they just completed. That they're bringing to Lock and Load. Um, so if you're looking for like some cool alternate schemes or some other stuff, uh, I'd like to give that person a shout out cause I thought their army looked really sharp and that was just on the war machine subreddit. Go check that out. I'm, it's still on that front page of there. I think about how they've got their cool circle. army all ready for lock and load. They're all excited for it. So 
Sorry, that's not an official privateer press <laughs> thingy, but uh, I thought it was really sharp. And if you're looking for circle stuff, I thought it looked really good. So shout out to that person's paint job. Shout out. So I'm doing a couple, couple more really, really bright ting highlights here on the mask. <coughs> After I put that, that wash just to, to pull back out these real bright areas. Oh, it was uh, Jay Hands, Circle Army. Jeff Handley, one of our uh, sales and accounts people. Mm -hmm. Well, Jay, other Jeff, Jeff 2. Jeff 2. Jeff, two. Jeff Beta. Not to be confused with Jeff <laughs> not to be Jeff with Not to be Jeffed with my, the prime Jeff, which is me. Um, because only one person here at this company is Jeff at Privateer Press, and that's me. But uh, Jeff, they had a really sharp looking army. Other Jeff. There we go. All right. Last video for painting leather. So I posted three videos one for painting stone, one for painting glow, and this last one for painting leather. And of course, these are not solely for painting. Yeah. yeah. For, use them uh, for anything. Circle armies. You use these techniques for anything you want to do. And anything you that's can leathery. You can adapt the process, change the colors, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. None of these are set in stone. Ha ha! Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't get your pun until you actually gave me the symbol crash. <laughs> God, that was weak. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I did the yeah. symbol crash. I know what's up. Uh, Jordan, we had a question a while ago, yep. and, and I pulled up a reference for it. Go for um, but somebody wanted to know, they, were, they had a question about, and I apologize, I didn't catch uh, who it was, but they wanted to paint up their Well of Orboros like a Stargate. I assume from the Ooh. television show. So if you're not familiar okay. with that reference, it's there in front of you. Oh, I am super familiar. Okay, with that it's, 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 this is the one thing Jordan does, is a. He's okay, a, so I know Stargate, but not anything not else. Classic <laughs> anything, cinema. <laughs> anything All right, else. fair. Now the Stargate, I, I know. I grew up with Stargate. Film. Okay. Well, hey, who, that was the first one I watched. Okay. Oh, okay. It was a film. All right. It's Kurt Russell in there. I watched that back in like '96 or something. Like, maybe maybe older than that. Probably older than that. Maybe like ninety eight. Wait, did you 99? say wait, in ninety eight you were like two? No, ninety eight I was like five. <laughs> My B. <laughs> yeah, your B, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I'm old. Yeah, you are. I'm not even gonna hold back on that one. Yep. PP. Did you already get this one? The Riot Quest Pig Tank will be sale for, for sale at Lock and Load. It, it will not. It will not. Yeah, we, I don't think we'll have anything Riot Quest no. related for sale at Lock and Load. I think the earliest we will have stuff for it, sale, and and we are literally three jokers in a room talking about painting stuff right now. So we are not an authority when it comes to when models go on sale. So you should take everything we say with a grain of salt. But I believe that the closest I think will be pre-releasing at a uh, Gen Con, uh, which yeah. is August first. That's please? the intent. Yeah, it's like the first week of August. Yeah. So, uh, and then, but we will have, or at least the plan is to have Riot Quest available to demo we, and yeah, play with. We will at, have some yeah, at lock and load. But I think that'll be primarily just corset stuff. So, um, lead foot and treads, mm -hmm. the pig tank. Um, I have no idea when they come out, but I think they're in an early one of the earlier waves. So, sorry, no, no pig tank at, at lock and load. <sighs> Jeff we'll Handley says that we can be Big Jeff and statistically average. I don't think you should call yourself Big Jeff. Oh, <laughs> Bam. Oh, oh. Actually, I'm a big tubbo. I'm a big fatty. <laughs> Where are we going for lunch today? I want three lunches. <laughs> uh, can I have one of those lunches, please? I'm, yeah. I'm kind of hungry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm very coffee today. So we are coming up at the top of our hour. If you have any questions more for Jordan. questions yeah. any for more Jordan, burning questions. Any painting, whether it's RMO painting or... up uh, in what do you do with these uh, or I, other projects? Yeah, what's, what's going on with these uh, sort of legging, strappy things going on? Because they were like that base coated brown, and then you wash them. Yeah, I'm kind of changing the color a little bit. I yeah, like... I liked the little the set of brighter thing you mm -hmm. did there. I thought um, looked real good. 
Oh, this is really – what are you putting on this? This is really wet, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, this is, like, way not how it should be looking. Uh-oh. So, oh, no. We're having a crisis here. Oh, crisis? Get the – oh, gosh. Get the hair dryer. No. You just but the best it. thing about paint is when you don't like it, you just pull it off. Yep. Or paint over it. Or paint over or it. Paint over yep. it, yeah. Um, mistakes <laughs> can be made. It's okay. Making mistakes with paint. Ah, uh, there's T-Marg. Mm-hmm. How long have you been here, Travis? You just probably just got here. Yeah. That's my guess. I'm going to hold him to it. So what are you slapping on these leggings here? This is like some Gordon Corp brown plus uh, mouth white base. And I should point out that I wasn't joking about a hairdryer. That's actually a piece of technology that is, is commonly used, used to uh, used. speed up. Now, it doesn't mean you just throw that sucker on high and you just blast your model. Uh, kind of. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> what, out of curiosity, what, when, because you have a little hand dryer you use. Yeah. Um, what kind of heat setting do you typically use on it? Because at least it when I was growing up. Setting. Really? Yeah. Okay, because when I was growing up, <sighs> there was like a, 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 a less, a warm and a hot, so... Yeah, no, the, the, it has no heat. So okay. It has fast and faster. And so what do you use, the fast or the faster setting? Depends on what I'm trying to dry. And typically, you're just kind of got it back there. You're just kind of waving it back and forth. You're not yeah, like yeah. sitting there I'm blasting. I'm doing one of the, like, this sort of thing. Okay, see, I'm not crazy. Travis's wife's hair dryer has, a, has a multiple settings. Yeah, I just have a little junky piece of... Crud yeah, yours is just like a little cheap one, which is like yeah. that's what everyone should probably use for this. Yeah. You just go yeah. and you, you spend, don't need like a fifty dollar hair. Yeah, you just go and spend ten bucks on Amazon or something. Yeah. I'm sure. If that, even. I'm sure they're pretty cheap. <sighs> well, when Grimkin can come out of a portal from Urkane, what color is the portal? That's an interesting question. That's a. This is a question you should hit up Seacat tomorrow. On um, on the lore chat coming up. So yeah, if you guys missed the announcement at the beginning of the stream. Uh, we're doing a lore chat tomorrow. Doug, Seacat, and Josh Cologne in front of a fireplace. Is there going to be a fireplace? There will be a fireplace. A, a, a <laughs> crackling fireplace. <laughs> Are, okay. Is it going to be audible crackling? It will be audible. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to pull up one of those like, YouTube videos yeah. of like. <laughs> That's my plan. Yeah. That's the plan. We know that hey, everyone, we have, the, we have yeah. the fireplace. You know, uh, I think it's like pretty lame that we're not actually like building an actual fire for them to like. That I sound... agree. Yeah. <laughs> what? That <laughs> yeah, sounds dude. like a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, you don't do it in the office. <laughs> we, we, we're gonna we go out to like a campfire somewhere, and we we get a nice. We should do going. a Lord's stream that's like actually out in like a campfire, yeah, a campfire. just like a roasting. Some, great. Yeah. With owls, some marshmallows, some cooing owls. in the background. Yeah. Interesting. We use a so Joe uh, says we use a dryer with a hole cut in a box and make a makeshift oven. That's interesting. So hmm. I presume that they like remember like remember when you were in school and you made like those dioramas, making like yeah. a shoebox and kind of hole in it. So yeah. they might just take like a shoebox, stick the models in there, cover the box, and then they just blow you know warm air. Oh, in there. it just keeps all the hot air in there. Yeah, interesting. Oh, that's not a bad idea. That there is one thing I wanted to to address with the using the hair dryer. Just a a quick tip after you're done. Blowing it with the hair dryer, let it cool down before you start applying paint to it. Because if, especially mm. if you're doing like fine detail, it'll dry your paint immediately. So if that's not what you want, like the, the model will still be hot. So mm -hmm, as soon as mm -hmm. the paint touches it, it'll evaporate that moisture. And be also be careful about the application of heat because some uh, materials for models can can warp under heat. So yeah, just be gentle. Mm -hmm. Like. It, in a, as a whole, like you don't want to be super aggressive with any sort of heat around your models because they will melt or bend. Um, luckily, like this model is all metal, so you don't have to worry about that yeah. quite as much. You'd have to get it real hot before it starts doing any sort of. Yeah, you're more likely to, or, to to bend a metal model just from the pressure of your co hands. Correct. And stuff. Yeah, it's it's much less likely that you're going to actually like hurt it by applying a, a blow dryer to it. But don't leave your resin models in your trunk in summertime. No. I just, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you probably honestly, just don't want to leave your models in your trunk. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, here in Seattle, it's, this is not going to be for everywhere, but, like, here in Seattle, even in the summertime, it doesn't get hot enough for, for your models to really melt. No, there's, like, a rock-solid week in July where it might get hot enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But, I mean, if, if it gets hot enough, you'll know. Yeah. Because you won't want to be anywhere. Because yes. it sucks to have it be that hot in <laughs> Seattle. Dracios Dragoon says, to make our fire, we could use a bunch of mini crate molds and make them a, or make them a fire from that. It will give them the fire the they next. want. Oh, yeah. Be, but here's the thing that that is one of the issues that we've run into making those videos. Those molds are nearly indestructible. They're shocking, shockingly difficult that, yeah. to destroy. So we were like, we're going to destroy them in all these ways. And then all of a sudden you start realizing, like, you can't just take a katana to these things and, and <laughs> chop them up like it's a cucumber or, or even setting them on fire. Like, they're meant to be extremely durable. durable. Yeah, because they're, like, literally having molten, like, lava metal poured into them. Yeah. Molten lava yeah. metal. I like it, Jeff. You can You can cut them with a saw. You can shoot them with bullets. <laughs> Uh, you can drown them, mm -hmm. uh, and and then uh, you can bury them in concrete. Um, you can hit them with a flamethrower, but even that just kind of cosmetically so the, alters them. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't really turn it to ash. So uh, we should do one where we're like C4. around when all else fails. C4, C4. Yeah. yeah, little beyond our safety rating, but I agree that would be glorious. Cool. Well, we're getting around to to eleven oh three now. Um, thanks. This guy is actually like look shockingly done, basically. Yeah. Like he's not they're, done, obviously, but like you could just real, put that guy on a table, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Like this probably would take another maybe half hour or an hour of like actual dedicated quiet time to paint, and it would just be done. Like this is most of the elements on this are are done enough to to call yeah. tabletop, right? Like. Just gotta paint that inner, inner like torso cloth bit as like little thing. Maybe put some more highlights on here, and you're basically done. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. It's mm. 11:03. We're gonna go grab some lunch. Well, what are we doing for lunch? Uh, that's a great question, but we will discuss that after this stream. Sure, that's good. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll show you some new cool stuff then. Nah, uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thanks for, the host thanks for, for watching. By. What about me? Bye -bye. I Mom. said hosts. Oh. Okay. Multiple. That includes you, Jeff. I'm a host. You're a host. I'm hosting. Bye, friends. <laughs>